The three-cornered flying machine is the creation of three budding scientists, Luke Duncan, Ethan Rain, and Jim Berggren, their students at Dearborn High School. What was it like, Jim, when this thing took off? Uh, it was it was incredible because you know we all had our doubts. So did I until they turned it on. As you that can see, amazing. there's nothing above it. There's anything below it. They have two of them a large prototype and a smaller one to be entered in next spring's Metro Detroit Science Fair going up. Basically made out of a balsa wood frame, it's very light, with a aluminum foil on the sides and then a wire that runs along the top. A hair thin and highly charged wire. The device is controlled by string tethers. It's anti-gravity, maybe. It definitely works, but why it works is open to debate. According to one theory, the craft is carried by an ion wind made by electrically charged particles. You can feel a breeze under there, and it's a pretty significant breeze. Another theory is that the craft creates two gravity fields, a positive field above the craft and a negative field below. And so there's a tendency of an object to move from a negative field to a positive field. The student's website has received at least 50,000 hits in just the last couple of weeks. The messages come from scientists and skeptics and fans. We also received an email from a girl telling us we were adorable and wanting uh, more information. Hey, hey, not going to get any better than that. Whatever it takes. The trio didn't invent this technology, but it's a pretty ambitious high school project. They've built a payload carriage to see how much weight their floating triangle can carry. By uh, all, you know, logic, a big enough version should be able to carry anything. Including a human? Well, not just yet. Whoa. Everything needs to be precise. And, and you know, if, it's, if one little thing's wrong, you, it won't fly. They have a lot more work to do before presenting this to the judges. The explanation is far tougher than the construction. What would it mean to you, Ethan, to win the science fair? I would mean that our hard work has paid off. Win or lose, they've reminded us of the many teenagers who are hitting the books and searching for answers. I suppose maybe we're not as uh, shallow as some people might think that, you know, we're only into our music and, you know, what goes on in the hallways. Obviously, we're looking into things and researching, trying to expand our minds. And that in itself is uplifting. In Dearborn, I'm Roger Weber, Local First.